It's time to go polling. I know we do this every week. We're going to dive into these polls, kind of look at what Oklahoma has done, where we've moved to, and what the heck does it mean? Now, are the Sooners progressing? Are they regressing? Are we rising? Are we falling? That's the question you have to ask yourself when you look at these polls and ask yourself what the media thinks about us as well as the coaches and also what we're actually looking like on the field. And so we're going to dive into that. Let's look at these polls, talk about that. We're also going to talk about these numbers. Before we do that, welcome to Unfair Sports. I'm your host, Jay. Thanks for pulling up to the channel. Let's dive into the numbers and what we're looking at here as far as what the Oklahoma Sooners look like this year in the polls, this week in the polls, and Are we seeing a progression or regression four weeks in? We'll compare it to the last two years like we did last week. So let's dive right into it, shall we? So taking a gander at this right now, let's look at the polls. All right, here's your polls number, right? We got Oklahoma sitting at 14 in the coaches poll as well as the AP top 25. Pretty darn solid, right? Slowly moving on up. Oklahoma moved up two spots in the AP poll and move and stayed in the exact same spot in the coaches poll after the victory against Cincinnati. So the first Big 12 game for Cincinnati, Oklahoma kind of sticks in the same spot. They move up and they join all the other unbeatens with what three one loss teams that were highly rated that fell right below them. So it's kind of interesting to see that the Sooners are there. And what makes it even more interesting, shout out to my boy. Dark Lord Popo in the Discord. My man Jake gave me some statistics that I wanted to show off and talk about because right now, the way this looks, kind of look like 2020. Now, I know, I know. Coincidence? I think not. Told y'all this. Look at these numbers from 2020. Preseason poll, we started off at 19 in 2020. We're now 2023. We're at 20. Went 93, you know, in 9-3 of 2020, which is you know, two days before this year's went from 20 to 18, then 18 to 19 on the 10th, which is exact same date, 17th, exact same date, 17 to 16, which that was a bye week really weird. But on the 24th, we landed right on 14 on both AP poll. You know, kind of feels like, uh, you know, a little Cinderella story, some special, you know, a little remix, a little replay, we're doing stuff similarly to what we did in 2000. The defense is what's leading everything, and the offense is putting up the numbers they're supposed to. But granted, we're actually putting up a little bit more than you would expect. We're going to dive into those numbers in a minute, but when I also pulled up the ESPN's FPI, y'all know that their computer ratings, basically their football power index, is more so their predictions on what you're supposed to be and who you are. ESPN's FPI, Got the Sooners still at number two. We bounced around from two to eight to four, back to two. We're back up there to number two once again. Right behind Ohio State. FPI had gave us a 24 point rank number two. And the projected win loss is at 11. Six win season is guaranteed. We're expected a 40%, 9% chance of winning our conference, making it to the playoffs, and then the computers still think Ohio State's going to win national championship. Now, I think that that's not always accurate, but I asked the question, can we prove these computers right? Is there a way we can do it? I think so. Let's go look at those numbers. Before we do that, hop in the comments. Let me know what's your thoughts on the polling. How you feel about 14? Love to hear you all in the midway. I, I want. I, I expect to see at least three comments from all of you in this video. So in this one, I want to hear how you all feel about the poll itself, where we're located. 14 is good, right? I kind of like it, personally. I like being underestimated. Let's look at the numbers we're doing. Offense and defense, these are both the numbers, but we're going to talk on defense first. Defensively, this year, Did any of y'all expect Oklahoma to be giving up less than 10 points a game to start the year? Yes, everybody's saying we played nobodies. But every team we've played in every other game besides playing against us has scored more than 10 points. Well, I think except for Arkansas State. But do they really count? If you want to argue with me on Arkansas State, totally get it. But when I go look at the games they played, 
Yeah. Southern Miss, they scored 37. They won they scored 44 points. Actually, against us in Memphis, they scored a combined three points. Then they put up 31 on Stony Brook and then 44 on Southern Miss in a battle. But overall, yeah. Besides them, everybody else that we played against had put out way more. And I put that stat out defensively. We Cincinnati averaged over 30, averaged 39 points per game before coming into this game. We held them six. That's huge. Similar to 2000, defense is leading things. And these are the numbers that jumped out to me. First off, we're getting less first downs than we did in 2021. That completion, that third down conversion percentage is 27%. It's so only the quarter of the time are we allowing teams to actually convert. So four out of 15 attempts, they're getting to third down and they're converting. Four out of 15. It's pretty darn good. We don't have as many sacks up there in the tackles for loss, which is pretty consistent, leading to that third down conversion number to be low. We're only giving up, we're giving up under 60% completion percentage on passes against us so far. Now, we haven't played any world-beating quarterbacks at our quarterback quarterbacks, but I think Stone's actually not bad. We're doing it. Turnovers, look at that. Didn't... Grinch have like a number with turnovers. You get like 19 or 20. That's like eight or nine wins or something like that. I know I'm bringing up the name that y'all probably gonna be mad about, but hear me out. We've got 10 turnovers so far. Last year we had five at this point. The year before that we had eight, I had seven, I'm sorry, seven, five fumbles, two interceptions. We have eight interceptions, two fumbles so far. Oh yeah. We haven't given up a rushing touchdown yet. We haven't given up a rushing touchdown yet. Thought I'd repeat myself there. I didn't know if y'all heard me there. And we're giving up less than 100 yards rushing per game on average. Pretty darn impressive. The defense might be legit. And knock on wood, we stay healthy. We're battling attrition right now. And it looks like we're getting some people back. Looks like Canick's possibly coming back. He's been practicing. I think Pearson should be ready for the weekend. So we'll have some more to continue that competitive depth. Should you take a drink when you hear that word? That's what I think on defense. So hop in the comments. Let me know what's your thoughts. How you feeling this defense? How you feel about it? What's your thoughts on that portion of it? All right, let's dive into the offense now. Because I think the offense is one that really should jump out to a lot of you. So comparing 21 to 23 and 22, all in a mix together offensively, here's some of the things that jumped out to me. The Nuggets, more points per game at 43. Completion percentage on third down, 65%. Eight for 12. Whereas last year, we were four for 12. We doubled our conversion percentage at third down, which means that in first and second, we're doing everything possible to not have third and long. And then when we have third and longs, I mean, we're converting them. I mean, you saw Marcus Major run that third and long and get the first down. Led to a pretty good drive. Completion percentage at the pass, 78.95%. So that's roughly 79%. Dylan Gabriel and, you know, the little bit we got out of Jackson Arnold, almost 80% completion percentage of passing. That's pretty flipping good. 351 yards passing, more than we had in 21 and 22 so far. More. And we're progressing up more passing touchdowns, less rushing, which that's the thing that I know everybody wants to get established. I think we'll figure it out hopefully this week. Hopefully health is not still kicking our butt. We need to get Barnes and Sawchuk out there and granted in practice, they probably don't look like they're very healthy. So they're not playing as much as you would like. We may see more of them this week. I know that Levy said something about alternating and it's more so probably getting Barnes and Sawchuk going. Remember, they're coming off of a fall that, you know, they had their injuries. I keep reminding y'all that because you got to remember the hammy injury and the foot surgery for Barnes, hammy injury for Salchuk. They're, they're things that can linger. You got to make sure that they're good on it. So, but numbers wise, I'm looking at this. This offense is still potent over 500 yards a game. We're still doing it more than 2021. We look better. We look more polished. We look more disciplined. It looks like everybody's bought in something that y'all wanted as Oklahoma fans, right? Just saying. So that's what the offense looks like. I want to hear from y'all. Hop in the comments. Let me know. 
What's your thoughts? How are you feeling about the way this offense is going? Chop it up back and forth. You know how we do. We want to see what things, how do you guys feel about the way the offense is going? Because to me, as much as I would like the offense to have more, they're still on pace to do better than the last two years. And that's a lot. Because y'all know who we had in 2021. All I got to say is if we end up with a better season statistically from the quarterback position, it's going to be hard for us to really be able to talk bad. But I think the thing about it is, is that we've got a quarterback that other teams would wish they had. They would kill for. We just are so used to having overly exceptional. So higher expectations. Now, I'm not mad at y'all for having higher expectations. I'm just reminding y'all that Dylan Gabriel is actually doing pretty good. Sue me. Hop in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. If you've made it this far, you like the content, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We'd love to have you join the family. Also, you can check out our Discord. We talk a lot of ball in there. It's a big family. We're having a blast. A lot of my intel comes from there and a lot of friends. They're just, you know, they're sharing all kinds of cool stuff. So we'd love to have you come in there and just chop it up with us on a daily basis. So besides that, YouTube says watch one of these videos. Hop, I highly recommend you watch it because, you know, I made those, pick those videos for you, the people. I want y'all to enjoy yourselves. Also, giving away two tickets to the Iowa State game. Check out the community tab. You'll see the link to be able to register. I think we got over 200 people in there right now. I'm going to make the pick at noon Wednesday, which is the 27th. So if you're watching this after the 27th, you missed out. Got to watch the videos earlier. So subscribe and hit that bell notification. Make sure you watch these videos as soon as they come down the line. I'm trying to help you out. But make sure you check it out in the morning. Um, Jump in there and get in the contest, but YouTube says watch one of these videos. Highly recommend it. I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll chop it up very, very soon. Peace.